Hello, my name is David Braley. I'm one of the intensive care consultants here at University College Hospital. And today I want to take you through the setting up of the new Ventura CPAP system. The system is essentially composed of three main parts. Firstly, the flow generator here, the disposable circuit, and we'll go through that in a moment, and this reusable oxygen analyzer. It's important to note that some components of the circuit and the oxygen analyzer can look different at times, but should all fit together in the same way and just as the instructions in the box would suggest. So let's start with the flow generator. It comes in a box packaged similar to this. Importantly, we need to remove the two red caps. They do say remove before use. And with that, we can then assemble our circuit. And there are a number of components to this. The first thing we are going to do is put the first T-piece on. And as this T-piece is what the oxygen analyzer is going to sit into. And we'll put that in at the end. Following that, we're going to apply a filter. And this filter will stop any entrained dust entering into the, uh, in, into the patient's airway. Beyond that, we're going to add another T-piece. And on the side of this T-piece, we're going to put this white extension. And on that extension, we're going to put what we call our safety valve. Now this is really important that we get the safety valve just right. If you can see, it is rated at 20 centimeters of water. It should be five to 10 centimeters of water above the CPAP. As we are going to be using a CPAP of 10 centimeters, 20 is therefore a reasonable choice. Then we can add the main part of the circuit, the tubing. It just slips over that T-piece there. It's about 1.5 meters long. For the next part, I'm just going to pop that on the desk. And now we're going to assemble the patient end, the mask. So this is a intersurgical mask, but again, they come from Armstrong. And there are many other types and colors that should all come in the same pack. The first thing we're going to do is add our CPAP valve to the bottom port on that mask. And again, the CPAP here is rated at 10 centimeters of water. So it's very careful to ensure that the 10 centimeters and the 20 centimeters are the right way round. Following that, we're going to add this blue flutter valve that will indicate to us how effective our CPAP is working. And onto that, we're going to add an exhaust filter. And this is particularly relevant for the COVID-19 patients. That is our face mask complete. And now we will just attach it to the circuit. So we have our circuit complete and attached to the flow generator. So the last thing we need to do in the preparation is to turn on, calibrate our oxygen analyzer here, saying 20.9%, that's about right. And we'll now add that to the circuit by putting it in to the top T piece. And it should just fit snugly like that. So there we have the flow generator, the oxygen analyzer, and the disposable patient circuit complete. So now let's try and plug it in and try it out. So before we attach this to a patient, I want to demonstrate to you some of the features of the Ventura flow generator. Firstly, this is how we attach the oxygen. It attaches to a standard wall outlet or through standard oxygen extension tubing. It just presses in with a click and you'll hear a hiss as the oxygen connects through. There are three buttons to the side, an on-off button, a button to adjust the flow, and a button to adjust the amount of oxygen you're giving to your patient. To start with, all the buttons will be wound in fully clockwise. As we start, we will turn the machine on by adjusting the on-off by turning anti-clockwise fully. We can then start to adjust our flow by again turning anti-clockwise. 
As we do so, we will start to hear a whooshing noise as the air and the oxygen starts to rush through the machine. Now importantly, there are a number of turns that can be made to the flow and the oxygen adjustment. And as one does so, the noise will gradually increase. Importantly, you cannot wind it too far. The buttons will not come out. To turn the flow down, we turn it the other way. And equally, as we want to adjust the oxygen, and we'll see how to do that shortly, we'll just turn the valve anti-clockwise. To turn it off, we just turn the off button. So now we have the flow generator plugged in, turned on, we've dialed up our inspired oxygen fraction, and we have flow running into the circuit. It's now time to apply either the mask or the hood to the patient. At this point, it's probably best to have one or two extra pair of hands. So I'm going to pass that to Bea. And with Valeria here, we're going to just very gently put the mask over the nose and the mouth. And we're going to pass these elastic straps behind the back, gently attaching to the pegs on the CPAP mask. Now, that should fit snugly around the mouth and the nose, and we should not feel any breath of air or leak around it. Important, we need to ask whether the area is comfortable at this point. So having applied the mask to our patients, we now need to adjust the flow to ensure the right CPAP is delivered. And we can do that by adjusting the flow button on the generator here. So it's important that we set our flow correctly. Firstly, to achieve the appropriate CPAP within the circuit, and secondly, not to be too wasteful of oxygen. With this system, there are essentially three ways we can assess this. The first is by looking at this green flutter valve at the lower part of the patient's mask. If the flow is correct as it is now, we should see that valve flutter open when our patient breathes out. As she breathes in, the valve closes, but not completely, suggesting the pressure within the circuit is maintained through the respiratory cycle. The second way of demonstrating this is to look at the blue flutter valve. As our patient breathes out, the flutter valve should go down about 30 degrees, and as she breathes in, the flutter valve will come back to an almost horizontal position, again suggesting that the flow within the circuit is currently appropriate. If we were to feel underneath the exhaust valve, and this is difficult in PPE, we would feel a flow of air throughout her respiratory cycle. If, for example, we drop the flow too low, the pressure in the circuit will start to fall, we would start to see this green valve close completely on inspiration. As we start to look at the blue flutter valve, we would start to see that valve start to rise up during inspiration. And again, as we feel under the exhaust, we would feel the flow go to zero as our patient breathes in. The flow is not adequate to keep the CPAP valve open, and therefore the pressure in the circuit is now falling. You can overcome this by adjusting the flow button anti-clockwise, bringing the flow up until it right again. Next bit. If the flow is too high, then we are being incredibly wasteful of oxygen, but it also starts to become uncomfortable for the patient. We start to see the green valve here open continuously through the respiratory cycle, fluttering in all parts. We start to see that the blue valve is inconsistently in the down position, and of course we will still feel but an increased flow through the respiratory cycle. If we were to take this to the absolute extreme, 
the pressure in the circuit will start to rise above 10 centimeters of water to the point where our safety valve starts to open. We may hear a noise, but we would then start to feel a flow of air through the safety valve. If that is the case, adjust your flow downwards by turning the button clockwise until we get all our markers back into position. It's really important to note that as the patient's condition changes, so the flow and with it the inspired oxygen fraction may need to be changed. This needs regular observations and adjustments to optimize the CPAP and the inspired oxygen fraction to your patient.